um, outstanding victory for us for many reasons. Number one, that's an outstanding team. And they won their league three out of four times. I certainly wouldn't bet against them this year. Uh, they've got experience, they've got depth, they've got inside play, they've got three-point shooting, they've got tremendous uh, driving ability. Pure boy is ridiculous how good he is getting the basket, reading plays that they have. You can tell, um, and, and I already know how good of a coach Steve Peichel is. I mean, it, it, it's obvious to me. I mean, he's a guy that it doesn't matter what level he's at. He's a high-level coach and a very high-level coach and has coaches with intensity, uh, is creative and innovative, if you can see all that and what they run. But what they are, they are extremely disciplined to, to, to what they want to get done. And they had a game plan that if we would have not attacked and got the ball reversed and settled on any side of the court, it would have been a problem for us. The ball had to move today. Bodies had to move. Um, we had to, 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 there was going to be time to maybe get down into the clock a little bit so we could get that movement that we needed, get the ball uh, back in Yogi's hands maybe or get it inside. We wanted to score very early in the clock or we wanted to make sure we got some reversals. The last thing we wanted to do was settle. And it wasn't a perfect game by any stretch, not even close. Uh, we did some excellent things offensively. We did some things with missing free throws, not so good. But what we did is we figured out that the intensity and the energy level uh, cannot wane. And if it does, you're not going to be in the game. And, and uh, one of the key parts of this game was Colin Hartman coming back in in the first half. And, and I learned a long time ago that when, when you try to change momentum, because we hit a lull. We had hit a lull that we were a little quiet, we were flat. You know, whether we were getting disappointed that we were missing foul shots, whether we thought it should be easier, whatever it was, whatever a young team goes through, we hit a lull. And uh, Colin came in and changed the energy level. And so it's a great example. It does not matter who it is, when it is, where it is. There's always somebody that can change momentum. And I thought Colin Hartman did that uh, in the first half. And, and, and one of the reasons is because he never stopped talking on that bench. And never stopped talking. I mean, he was asking questions. He's constantly pointing things out to his teammates. That's what we have to have. That's how you grow up and learn. And, and we have to have it from everybody. Second half was much better for us, especially on the backboards. We were only up three on the boards and we had four offensive rebounds at halftime. And that can't happen. That can't happen. I mean, it, 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 uh, we're going to find out if rebounding is a strength because we're getting ready to go on the road. And it's not a strength unless it's traveling. And it's not a strength unless you can do it against the best people. So um, we've certainly got the components of, of being really good at some things. We've got the components of having a deep team. We certainly have the talent. But will we continue to understand how important intensity and intelligence are? And then you can play on your instincts and, and, and grow from there. But uh, the, the game that Yogi played, two best games he's played in Indiana because number one, they're back to back. And he really played the same way. He, he played way more minutes than what I would have liked today, but that's just the way that it was. But he is continually trying to find what the game is giving his teammates and then what the game is giving him. And he's playing defense at an extremely high level. And, and all this, he, he's doing a great job of figuring out what we have to do to win that possession. Doesn't mean we're always going to win it, but to win that possession, to get the best shot, the best movement inside of that possession, all of a sudden he's got 50 points in two games. And if he continues to do that, because he is, it's not like we're going to go down the line and we'll all of a sudden he'll be the focal point on another team's scouting report. He's already there. I mean, he's already at the top of the list. I put him and, and you have to, it, it, when you have that attention being paid to you, it's not always going to be the way you want it. You've got to figure out how you can get it where it needs to be, and he's doing that. Noah, um, J.D. just told us all in there, there hasn't been a triple-double here for 40 years. Triple-double, yeah. Yeah, but Noah's got two in my mind because he had 15 deflections today. <coughs> and Troy came and had 12. So we had, a, I think we had 63 on the day. We had two guys, two freshmen, and double figures. And deflections, that, that's a huge, huge deal for what we're doing. Uh, Evan Gordon uh, did a great job. They were isolating him in the first half. And as I told him, there's we, we, nobody's going to get isolated on this team, let alone a senior, in the sense of being attacked off the dribble. And he did a much better job in the second half of figuring that out. And all of a sudden, in two games, he's got 22 points because he's attacking the rim, made his three today. He's working very hard. He's got to continue to bring a high level of intensity uh, and competitiveness to everything that he does and continue to, 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 to bring the, the, you know, the verbal up. It's got to come up for him to continue to grow the way that he has. 
uh, or the way that he is. And all of a sudden, Troy Williams is got the second best high, high or plus minus on our team. And that's strong. That's strong when you're a freshman. He makes a lot of plays. He makes a lot of things happen. Uh, he's getting better right before our eyes, your eyes, everybody's eyes daily. And uh, there's really no limit to him. Um, Luke Fisher came in in the second half. Our best lineup in the first half was the one we started at the beginning of the second half. They scored seven of eight possessions. They, they were in together. And so we like the energy of it. We went with that lineup in the second half. It's not about who starts. It's not about necessarily you know, who gets what minutes. It's who's going to figure out a way for us to win. And then it's a lot more about who finishes the game. And I thought that second half starting lineup uh, really gave us some good things. So go on and on, but I'm sure you got questions. So that, just uh, what has it meant, uh, not just the rebounding, but being able, I guess, to establish Noah early the last couple games? It seems like getting him the ball in good positions offensively has been maybe less of a challenge than it was at the beginning of the year. Well, I think it's up to him. I think it, he's, I think we, we, it, it has to go in, okay, first and foremost. And I think I said this the other day, but on Tuesday night, we had nine post-ups in 40 minutes. I said, we're going to have nine post-ups in the first eight or nine minutes. And, and we continue to do that. I think now what he's got to continue to do, because the double teams came, they're going to come from different angles. He's going to start to be scouted at an even higher level. And so he's got to be quicker with his moves. But the bottom line is he's demanding the ball with his body. Soon he'll be demanding the ball verbally, but he's demanding the ball with his body. Because if he knows if he doesn't demand the ball, we're going to break, I'm going to take him out of the game. Because he's too good not to do that. And uh, uh, he's learning. He's learning the offense. He's learning what what we want to get after the timeouts. He's learning um, what has to happen next. Like he, he took a three. I want him to shoot threes, but not when they can't guard you. And, and that's where he should have drove the ball to the post or drove the ball into the lane. He's still learning a lot of different things. But I think what's helped him too is, is Hunter is establishing that, that we can go in there and make things happen. Luke is going to establish that we can go inside to him. And uh, Jeremy needs to continue to establish that. And then I think you saw tonight when we posted Yogi in different situations. So there's a lot of different things we can do to get the ball inside, but the number one premise has got to be it's going in there no matter who it is. Rich, finally had like 18, 15, he had something like 14. And 15. Right. And 15 Don't deflections. And, you know, he had a steal and a block. What growth have you seen in his game over the last couple of weeks, and what, what further growth do you want well, to see? Well, I think it's just that he's playing. I, I think that, that I, I think you can see it, and, 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 it's, it, and we'll have some setbacks, believe me. It's like I said last week, we worked offense, I don't know, for about an hour and ten minutes, the two-hour and ten-minute practice, and we got out there Tuesday night, we looked like we'd never been together. We looked like we were, you know, coming to play some games with the hyper, and, and let's just go run. I mean, we didn't, it's going to take time. I, I, I just try to let them know we don't have a lot of time. We've got to get better every day with it. Well, same with him. He's, he really wants to be great. He's got a tremendous humility. Um, I would drink for anybody in that class, and then a lot of great players and all that kind of stuff. But, but I'm talking about upside, um, what he is capable of, what he's willing to do to get there, and how much he knows he doesn't know at this point. And, and, and when you start putting humility into a talented person, now you've got a chance for an incredible upside. So I can't give you an answer on where it's going to be. I don't think anybody could. But he's going to continue to expand. He's going to continue to get better. He's going to continue to get more comfortable. He's going to continue certainly to get more attention. But, uh, and there's things, and there's things that we're working on with him every day, whether it be post-up wise, rebounding wise, stuff that, that we want to get off film, that, that, that people can't scout to. And that's what we want to continue to do. So he's like all of them. There's a lot of room for growth. And he knows it and wants it. Gary? I know you're not surprised with Yogi having those kinds of games back to back. Is it just his confidence that uh, you know that, that seems to really come out now? He, he I said this to him a couple weeks ago. He's going to be as great as his leadership allows him to be, and I think you're seeing that. Uh, I think there's going to be some nights that that he's not going to make shots. There's going to be some nights that he doesn't get a ton of shots. He's got to have the same disposition. He's got, a, he's got a very, very high level disposition on both ends of the court right now. He knows that uh, his defense can, can feel his offense. He knows that our defense can feel our offense. He knows that his offense can feel his defense. I mean, he, when you've got the ball in your hands like he does, and, and I think what he's really, what he's
but he's really, I would think, enjoying, but he's gaining a lot from it. We're moving him around a lot. I mean, he's in a lot of different positions. You know, we, move, we, we, we always try to move players. Well, it, it, the point guard, we don't have him in just a standard position. That's not the strength of what our program is, and that's not the strength of how we're trying to develop guys. We want the strength to be they can do multiple things at any given time. You know, whether one possession this, one possession the next possession that. So, but he's playing defense at an extremely high level, extremely high. And, and I think that's, uh, uh, that's the biggest thing at this position. Sure. Jeff, you harped on the new foul rules, all that kind of stuff over the last couple of games. Did you really kind of see a bit of a difference today? And do you think the guys kind of grasp what that means a little bit more? Playing against well, I think it's, it's, it's all part of the process. It, it, um, I, this is going to take time. I think the bottom line, I think it happened to us today, though. The last foul that you have cannot affect your next play. You, you're trying to figure out, they're trying to figure it out. You know, the referees are trying to figure it out. I mean, and, and that's that's not negative, that's just the way that it is. I mean, there, that crew, there were there were a couple of things that happened today on the play where Noah got called for a foul when he was laying on the ground. And one of the referees said to me, he said, you might see that every 10 years. We saw it twice today. There were two calls like that. I mean, it's just a different day. I mean, it's just different. And, and so if you can't adjust to it mentally, and if you can't adjust to it physically, you can't adjust. You have to have both of those things. And it goes for the coaches. It goes for the players. It, it goes for everybody. And the other team's trying to do the same thing. I had a buddy of mine the other night tell me, he says, these new rules have got my team all screwed up. You know, it can't. It can't. you got to be able to move right on. And I thought they did a great job tonight and, and uh, of uh, 